So I plumbed my whole house with zero experience. And it was actually a lot easier than I ever imagined it would be. I'm gonna tell you the system that I used and I think that made all of the difference by the way. Because there's a few ways that you can plumb your house, you can choose a bunch of different materials. I went with a PEX manifold and in my opinion, for somebody who is a newbie to plumbing that doesn't have any experience, I think that's the best way to go about it. I'll explain the benefits of it and what my experience was like, but I think that if you're thinking of doing your own plumbing, then I, you're definitely gonna wanna watch this video. I'm also gonna talk about the PEX manifold that I used and how everything's been working out so far. So hey, if this is your first time stopping by, thanks for stopping by. Me and my family are currently building a 60 by 40 Barndo. The back half is a, a building. We're done with the downstairs. And so we have a functional downstairs, but we're still finishing the upstairs. And I'm documenting this whole process. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. Also be sharing with you some additional tips that are gonna help you to save money. So first off, let's talk about why I went with PEX. I chose PEX over copper because I was actually a real estate broker in Southern California. And basically every time a house would turn to be about 20 years old, copper would start leaking. Now I know that people say, well, PEX might have the same problem but I'm not sure about that. I, I think that anytime we were selling houses that had copper and it had pinhole leaks, you'd do two things. You either um, coat the inside of the pipes, which I don't think was the best uh, option for a repipe, or they would do a new PEX system completely. So all of the houses that, that they were building, I'm sorry, selling and then replumbing, they were putting PEX in. So I think that from a standpoint of lasting a long time, I think PEX is going to do really well. Now, PEX systems obviously are not as old, it's not been around as long, so who's to say that in 20 years we won't get leaks at say the fittings or something. But I think it's a good system and uh, there's really two different ways that you can run PEX in your house. The first way is through what's called a tree and branch. And that's basically exactly what it sounds like, right? Where you have a main line that goes in and then it, cu it cuts off with these different branches and the different branches feed the systems in your house. A tree that'll go to your bathroom, say, and then each one of the branches will feed the sink and the toilet and the shower. The problem with that system is that when you're in the shower and somebody flushes the toilet, you can have a loss of pressure. I didn't want that happening. We were living in the RV full time as we were building and so, we didn't want, in, in the RV, they actually have a train branch system. And so if you're in the shower, we had an instant hot water heater and somebody used a, a sink or flushed the toilet, the water would go cold. And that was a bummer. So we didn't want that happening. We have three bedroom, or sorry, four bedrooms in here, three bathrooms. We wanted to be able to use the uh, washing machine, the dishwasher and everything while we were taking a shower and not see a drop in water pressure. Especially because we have lots of kids, we're always doing laundry and things like that. A PEX manifold allows us to do that. Let me show you what a PEX manifold looks like. This is our PEX manifold. I bought this on Amazon on Prime Day and I think it was only $76. By the way, I'm gonna be doing a video about Prime Day deals. If you're building your own house that you cannot miss, Prime Day is coming up here soon. And there's a lot of things that you can buy on Amazon and save a ton of money. Again, I think I got this for like 76 bucks, which was like super cheap. It was on a Prime Day sale. And I was a little bit nervous because it was so cheap. If you go to Home Depot or other places, you're gonna be looking at at least 300 bucks for a PEX manifold. Um, there was a few things about this one, I'll go in depth on it here in just a second. But there was a few things that I was a little nervous about, uh, specifically that it's all plastic fittings. And um, there was reviews that said, if you don't cap them off, they will leak even in the off position. That hasn't been my experience. We've had a really, really positive experience with this PEX manifold. So the way that this thing works is, we have our cold water that comes in through the top here. That services all of our cold lines. Then we also have a outlet that goes from our uh, cold line that goes into our hot water heater. This is our on-demand electric hot water heater. Comes out of the hot and then goes into the hot inlet at the top. It's actually super simple to set up. One thing that's really, really important to note with all of these plastic PEX uh, manifolds, you have to get a special three quarter inch fitting. So the way that the PEX manifold works is that each one of these lines uh, going out goes to a specific spot in the house. So every single fixture has its own outlet lines. This is cool for a few reasons. First off, if you need to work on something, you can turn off each one individually. So each one of these is labeled individually. So for each one of these, we have like, for example, downstairs bathroom, we have the faucet, the toilet, 
and the shower. Now you'll notice that there's more colds than there are hots, and that's because for each uh, room, for example, your bathroom, for example, you're gonna have a cold toilet line. So you have more need for cold lines than you do hot lines in your house. You're gonna wanna get a PEX manifold that's going to be able to service all of the needs that you have. Obviously, I have a lot of line spaces available still, which I actually like a lot because like, for example, I'm putting a spigot on the outside of my house over here for an RV hookup, which is gonna be um, great to have its own line. The other thing that's really good about this system is that each one of these lines, it runs directly to the fixture itself, right? So like the toilet upstairs, it runs all the way direct. We built a soffit and we ran each one of these lines through the soffit in a direct shot all the way to the up, up fixture that it's going to. And so it doesn't require a bunch of technical ability. I didn't have to plan out a system and think to myself like, okay, I'm gonna uh, be going out to this side. I have these different lines. I need at least this size pipe, right? I don't have any of that expertise. And so this was just simple. It reminds me a lot of an electrical panel because the electrical panel has a circuit that goes to each bedroom for a plugs and a light circuit, right? So each bathroom has, you know, a faucet, a hot, a cold for the faucet, a hot and cold for the shower, a cold for the toilet. Um, with this, we actually, I got one that was big enough, like the price was so good that I got one that was big enough that like the kids' bathroom upstairs has two faucets. Each one of the faucets has its own line. So there's a hot and a cold two times for each one of the faucets because it's a two basin sink up there. So it was just really, really simple to run. It didn't take any guesswork. There was no way for me to mess this up. The cool thing too, in my opinion, is that each one of these lines is a straight shot. There's no couplings or connections. So if I was running a branch and tree or a uh, copper system, I would be having connections that I would have to solder. This limited the number of connections, which in my opinion, connections are points of failure potentially, right? And so uh, the fewer connections that I can have, hopefully the more reliable the system will be. With this PEX, you just have to make sure it doesn't kink going around corners and that, um, you know, if you have any kinks, it obviously damages the pipe and could create a situation where you do have um, potential weakness. So if you think about it, this points of potential failure we have right here where there's a connection. So this PEX manifold absolutely is a potential point of failure. The good thing is though, I built this uh, closet for it here in the garage. And so I can work on it if I need to. I can see what's going on. I can work on it. If I'm working on any of the fixtures, I can turn them off individually instead of turning off the entire house water. I also did uh, install a shut off in the garage though. That's before this, right where the water comes in so that I could easily shut the water on and off. And I have had to use that in the past. So that was really helpful. So the only tool that I needed was this, which is a, a crimp tool that I bought on Amazon. Uh, I also got this on Prime Day. It was a really good price. Most of the time when you'd see a crimp tool, it would be something like a hundred bucks at least. And it would typically only be for a single size. This crimp tool goes from one inch to three quarters to half inch to three eighths. The one inch size has no um, insert in it, but it comes with a PEX cutting tool, a go no go gauge, and then all of the individual sized crimp tools. So what you do is you crimp the edges, I'm sorry, you crimp the fittings, and then you test it with a go no go tool. Um, that's all the expertise that you have to have. Now my understanding is that these PEX crimping tools are difficult if you're working on uh, remodels, right? Because you have to get this large tool in a small space. Um, but for new construction, like I was doing, all the walls were open. It was really, really simple to get everything in. Check it really well. We're actually not done upstairs. You were upstairs with me. And so the whole system is pressurized and we pressure checked it before we closed everything up. But it was really, really simple and just easy. I plumbed the entire house in two days total uh, with all these PEX lines. The drain pipes were a little bit more complicated, the drain and the venting system. But as far as plumbing this, super simple. I really enjoy it. A few things that I think you might want to consider. If you're getting a system like this, again, I mentioned that these fittings here, which are I'll, I'll link to uh, in the description, make sure that you get these. So I bought this PEX system and then I thought that just the standard one inch would fit. It does not. Uh, it's actually a weird um, thread. And so you have to buy those along with the PEX manifold. It's really important. It's a bummer because I live out in the country and so um, it took like a week to get that. So I was just waiting on those things so that I could pressure test the system 
And uh, another note really quick is when you're putting those on, make sure you thread them on first and then crimp your pipes on because it's easy to cross thread this. All of these fittings are plastic. So you wanna make sure that you thread these things on first and then crimp them in place. Hope that makes sense. Now, the other thing that they said about this PEC system, which I don't know is for sure, is I mentioned this, but if you look up here, we have these crimps uh, on with a cap. They said that even when the system is turned off, it will still drip link occasionally. We haven't experienced any of that, but I just put that on just to be safe. I don't think that is an issue with most of these PEX manifolds. We bought all of these things on Prime Day and uh, it was less than 400 bucks for everything, for all of our water lines, all of our PEX, uh, and everything included, which I think was a, a really good deal. Um, I don't know what prices are, but generally copper has been going crazy in price. Um, PEX seems like it's still pretty low. So if you're trying to build a house on a budget, you don't have a lot of expertise like I did, uh, this is, I think, a really, really good system. It's simple. There's fewer points of failure. You're not gonna have water pressure issues. And overall, I think it's the way to go. If you're into homesteading, building a house, or any of those kinds of things, be sure to subscribe and follow along. Thanks for watching. If you found value, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and comment if you have any questions or any thoughts at all. Obviously, I'm a newbie, uh, so there's probably some things that I left out. But if there's anything that you think would help other people, be sure to comment that down below. I appreciate you, and I'll see you again soon.